Hello. Yesterday I made a demo of how to configure this bike with the Maxim and the Harmony 32 BMS and Dash 35B display on it. And in that video, I was using the I was editing the code directly that is on our GitHub repository or the script for it. And uh, I realized that this meant to be a bit intimidating for many people. So I've been working on a package that lets you do the basic configuration just from QML and you don't have to write any code. And uh, what also is included here is that it has an automatic IPM motor setup button that uh, will configure things like uh, maximum torque per amp and everything for you. And it will also change the observer and configure encoder and so on. So it should be probably the closest thing we can get to a single click configuration. I can start by showing what is on the bike and how it is configured. So there is our Vesk Labs GitHub repository or account, and then we have the TS125 repository. And it is called TS125 because that is the name of the bike. And here we have uh, the cable harness um, as a KiCad project. We can also open it as a PDF. Uh, I prefer to open it in KiCad because then it's easier to highlight nets and things like that. And there is also a CAD directory where we have a custom mount for the display. Some people have asked if you can remove the mount on it, and you can. And this bike is a case where you couldn't fit it with the original mount because it has this uh, bar above the handlebar here because it's an old bike. And uh, then I had to make a custom one, and the step files for this one are in this repository as well. Um, I will open the KiCad project and show the schematic. And this is the harness of the bike. So we can see this part here is how everything is connected on the 39 pin connector. And this connector you can find on the Maxim, the Maxim Plus, and on the Pronto. And if you use the same schematic and the same harness, it should plug in and work the same way on all of them. And then we have this section here with how everything is connected on the handlebar. This is uh, the inside of the battery. I will not go into the battery here um, because uh, we have a separate uh, I think we have a separate video on how to configure and connect the BMS. And I will assume in this video that this is already done. And then we have the tail of the bike here where we have the indicators and the tail light. And then we have the motor. And uh, we have uh, these connectors on the motor. I should probably zoom in so you can see. These are connected to our ABI encoder. And uh, the configuration script assumes that you have this one or one that has the same number of pulses per revolution and PWM output. And uh, here on the handlebar, you can see that uh, we have those left hand side buttons for the indicators and how the horn and the uh, high beam and low beam buttons happen to be connected in this particular set of buttons. And here, for example, we're not using the low beam one and uh, the one called beta external we use for the hazard signal. And they are routed to the 39 pin connector like this. You can, for example, follow the um say the high beam signal headlight high beam so you can see it goes to the headlight connector itself to the input which senses it and it goes to this um, switch here so it actually switches the 12 volt on mechanically and activates the high beam and then we use this pin to read the high beam input and send that signal in the canvas so that you get that symbol in the display and getting that symbol is a requirement if you want to register it as a street league bike here in Sweden and probably many other places. And uh, the same thing, it's not the same thing for the indicators because the indicators, um, they connect to the indicator inputs, the buttons, and then the outputs from the indicators, which you can see here, they go to the outputs here on the connector. So we read the buttons using the Maxim and then we actually do the indication signal itself with the outputs on it here. And uh, that also allows us to do this thing that I will show, I think I've shown in before, where when, they, when it's not indicating that you have a dim glow in the indicator, which looks quite good. And you can also disable that. Um, so that is uh, roughly how you start with the schematic. And how we made this harness, we just wired it up with uh, regular automotive cables and used, uh, I think it's called some kind of cable wrapping tape and wrapped it around. It wasn't that much work, so it's quite easy to follow these connections and wire it up. 
Um, so um, I will start by switching the bike on. And this key goes to the Harmony 32 BMS that does the pre-charge and then switches everything on. And what I've done already is I configured the display to connect to my Wi-Fi here. Uh, but if it's not connected, you can connect to it using Canvas or the Bluetooth on the Maxim and so on. So there are a few ways to get in. And uh, here I will be using Wi-Fi. And now I'm on the Maxim. I will actually start by uninstalling all of the packages. Um, I should have done that before I started the video. But uh, install the package, load the default motor config and load the default app config. And now that I changed app config, it might change can ID. No, I don't think it will because it already had the default one. So the Maxim now is as it will come when it is shipped with no configuration done and no package installed. And this device here called SDR365IO, that is also the Maxim actually, that is the ESP on it or the Express. So the Maxim has both um, uh, the SDM that runs the motor control and an ESP32 that uh, has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and controls some of the functions in the 39-pin connector. And same thing here, we'll uninstall the package on it. So, and the display comes pre-installed with the package and this one, except making connected to the Wi-Fi, I haven't done anything to it. So I will start with the IO board. I will go to the VAX packages, update archive. And you should update this archive before starting because I just started working these packages and there will probably be some updates in the near future as people ask questions. Then I will try to make make it a bit more user friendly and fix bugs if there are. I mean, there will probably be some, but if there are any, as we discover them. So now with the archive updated, the IO board selected, I will do install. And this is the VLBike 39P ESP package. And now if I select the Maxim 120, you see that it shows the VLBike 39P SDM package. So it will only show the one that can be installed when it's selected in the device list here. And I will install this one. And I will start with the Maxim itself. So now when I have the package installed, and I go to the first page and uh, notice also this could all have been done from the mobile interface even over Bluetooth connection because it's not really using anything specific in a desktop version of Pascal. So now we have the package installed and then we have the app UI and then we have four tabs in here. The motor detection, the input configuration because we're not using the ADC app and the reason we're not using it is so that we can have cruise control and in fact it's using the VASC remote app uh, and that's why we have the configuration page for it here. And I also added a tab that is essentially a so shortcut to the additional info page. So you can set up your motor poles, gear ratio, wheel diameter, and so on. And these need to be set in order for the speedometer to show the correct speed because it needs to know your wheel size and gearing and everything. So now it is installed. And I just want to show on the other side, this is how the chains usually look on this bike. And what I've done now, I've removed this primary chain, so the motor is just spinning freely with the gear like this. And uh, if you can do that, I would recommend it because the detection will be safer and more accurate and more often successful if you don't have a lot of rotating inertia connected to motor. But if it's uh, hard to remove it, it usually works by just putting the rear wheel up above the ground. So that is the state of the bike now, and I will do configure motor. You can see here that we have the VASC Labs ABI encoder selected. I will set the motor current. I want to run this one on 600 amps later, and you have to use your own judgment and the motor data sheet and so on to come up with a good number here. And the detect current, which is what it uses to spin up the motor in open loop, I will leave that as the default. So I will click it. It will ask you to confirm because it will start moving things now, and I will confirm it. And I also have R2 data selected here, so I can see the current down here. And now the motor there is, uh, yeah, spinning and doing its detection and so on. Configuration done. It also updated the config. And now if you want to, you can go to FOC and see that, well, we have all of the values, the encoder detection seem to be successful, and we have a very high sensorless ERPM. So this one actually runs encoder all the way. 
because uh, that usually works a bit better than the observer when you have a salient IBM motor and you push it to the very limits. And uh, the next thing to do is to configure the input. And uh, here we have uh, three gauges. And if you do pull voltage, it will pull the throttle voltage, the brake voltage, and it will show the combined output. And then if you go to the bike and uh, move the throttle and brake, you can see the throttle gauge moving. You can also see the output moving. And here you can see the brake moving. And what you have to do here, you have to move them to uh, minimum and maximum values, note what the voltages are, and put uh, enter them here. And they have the correct values here by default, because when I made the script, I used my bike for it. And then if you don't happen to have a brake lever, if you only have a throttle, you can untick use brake here. And um, when you have set all of this, you can do right. Now I untick the brake. And if I do that, you can see, for example, that if we use the brake now, it will not affect the output. It will affect the brake voltage. And if I tick it again and do right, now you can see we get the negative output. Next step is the controls. And here I will set, uh, this is the, just the Vesper boat, and I will just set it to current control. Reduce the ramping time a bit, because I want my throttle to be responsive. I will reduce the input dead band to 5%, because I don't want to have a big section that is not giving any throttle on my throttle. And I will disable smart reverse. Smart reverse can actually be useful in a bike if you have a brake, uh, but there is also a reverse function with the display in, then I will just use that. So I will write. Um, didn't get any confirmation there. Sometimes when you have real-time data polling, it will not. And you connect it over Wi-Fi, then it might get lost the package. So I will try it again. And now we got the app conf right, okay. And now in this stage, the throttle should work. And remember when you have the VAS display and this package by default, it is neutral. So neutral, the throttle will not do anything. So if I put it in gear one, the throttle and the brakes work. The last thing you have to configure is on the vehicle tab. And here you have to set the pole pair count of the motor. This one happens to have eight poles, four pole pairs. This, the gear ratio with my dual stage gearing system this one happens to be, I think I wrote it on the motor. No, but I remember it is uh, 8.7. And uh, obviously 72 maybe. And the wheel diameter, I think it's roughly 600 millimeters. I should double check that. Uh, but I think it's roughly around 600 and you can measure yours. Uh, but I will not fill with that in this video. And then we write that. And uh, now, assuming that these are correct, then you should see the correct speed here on the speedometer of the bike when you're using it. And uh, also by default, the modes 1, 2, and 3 have different speed limits that set. So 1 is set to 25 km an hour, 2 is 45, and 3 is unlimited. And you can go and change what they are in the code. I might add a new tab here to change them at some point, but it is not there yet. But this is essentially everything you need to do to get the bike running. Um, on the ESP, on the IO board, you don't really need to configure anything. Uh, but you can, and I will show that briefly. And all you can configure on this one is really how the indicated glow I mentioned before works. So now if we switch on the lights, and you do that with this button here that comes with the display, you can read that in the manual too. You see that we have a dim glow on the indicators, and when I'm indicating, they go brighter. Same thing if I'm using the hazards. And if you happen to have an indicator where they flicker or do something weird, or you simply don't want to have it, you can disable it here by, for example, going down to zero and doing right. And now you see that the glow is gone. You can also change the intensity, so 0.4 and 0.8, which is the default, which is what I will leave it at. And you can also experiment with the frequency if your indicators are affected by that. Uh, which they might be because they might have some driver or capacitor or so internally. And that is really everything there is to it. Um, to recap, um, 
you update the packages, update the firmwares, install uh, the 39p SDM package on the SDM, the Maximum 120, or the Pronto, or whatever you have. Then you install the ESP package on the one called str365io, which is the ESP and the Maxims. Then you get this UI, you start with the motor, uh, you select the encoder if you have it, or senseless if you don't have it, there might be more options later. Set your current that you intend to use, configure IPM motor, then the motor is done, then you go to input, try your throttle and brake, set those values with poll data active, write them, uh, activate your throttle, change things here if desired, you don't really need to change anything here, the only thing you have to do to make it work is to set it to uh, something other than off, and uh, something other should essentially always be current. And finally, you go to the vehicle page and configure your gear ratio and everything for the speedometer to be correct. And then if you want to, you can go to the IO board and configure the indicator glow, which is, there might be more things here later on, but now that's the only thing you can do. And now we have the complete bike. It also has cruise control and the different drive modes and everything. Uh, headlight and they had in the in, in the screen you can see the headlight symbol and the indicator symbols and everything and it has uh, like things like the brake will disengage cruise control and all of these things are working and uh, it feels pretty polished like this with uh, with this current setup and it's quite easy to replicate for what it is so uh, yeah hopefully this is useful and if you have any questions if something doesn't work just let me know and I will try to help and also try to update the package and if there is something that could be made simpler.